somebody you know well, you've worked together closely on some of the ideas behind OpenAI is Elon Musk. You have agreed on a lot of things. You've disagreed on some things. What have been some interesting things you've agreed and disagreed on? Speaking of a uh, fun debate on Twitter. I think we agree on the magnitude of the downside of AGI and the need to get not only safety right, but get to a world where people are much better off because AGI exists than if AGI had never been built. Yeah. What do you disagree on? Elon is obviously attacking us some on Twitter right now on a few different vectors. And I have empathy because I believe he is understandably so really stressed about AGI safety. I'm sure there are some other motivations going on too, but that's definitely one of them. Um, I saw this video of Elon a long time ago talking about SpaceX, maybe it was on some news show. And a lot of early pioneers in space were really bashing SpaceX and maybe Elon too. And he was visibly very hurt by that and said, you know, those guys are heroes of mine and I sucks and I wish they would see how hard we're trying. Yeah. Um, I definitely grew up with Elon as a hero of mine. Um, you know, despite him being a jerk on Twitter or whatever, I'm happy he exists in the world. But I wish he would do more to look at the hard work we're doing to get this stuff right. A little bit more love. What do you admire in the name of love about Elon Musk? I mean, so much, right? Like he has... He has driven the world forward in important ways. I think we will get to electric vehicles much faster than we would have if he didn't exist. I think we'll get to space much faster than we would have if he didn't exist. And as a sort of like citizen of the world, I'm very appreciative of that. Also, like being a jerk on Twitter aside, in many instances, he's like a very funny and warm guy. And uh, some of the jerk on Twitter thing, uh, as a fan of humanity laid out in its full complexity and beauty, I enjoy the tension of ideas expressed. So, uh, you know, I earlier said that I admire how transparent you are, but I like how the battles are happening before our eyes, as opposed to everybody closing off inside boardrooms. It's all laid yeah, out. Yeah, you know, maybe I should hit back and maybe someday I will, but it's not like my normal style. It's all fascinating to watch. And I think both of you are brilliant people and have early on for a long time really cared about AGI and had had great concerns about AGI, but a great hope for AGI. And that's cool to see um, these big minds having those discussions, uh, even if they're tense at times. I think it was Elon that said that uh, GPT is too woke. Uh, is GPT too woke? Is, can you still man the case that it is and not? This is going to our uh, question about bias. Honestly, I barely know what woke means anymore. I did for a <laughs> while and I feel like the word is morphed. So I will say, I think it was too biased and will always be. There will be no one version of GPT that the world ever agrees is unbiased. What I think is we've made a lot, like again, even some of our harshest critics have gone off and been tweeting about 3.5 to 4 comparisons and being like, wow, these people really got a lot better. Not that they don't have more work to do, and we certainly do, but I I appreciate critics who display intellectual honesty like that. Yeah. And there, there's been more of that than I would have thought. Um, we will try to get the default version to be as neutral as possible, but as neutral as possible is not that neutral if you have to do it, again, for more than one person. And so this is where more steerability, more control in the hands of the user, the system message in particular, is I think the real path forward. And as you pointed out, these nuanced answers to look at something from several angles. Yeah, it's, it's really, really fascinating. It's really fascinating. Is there something to be said about the employees of a company affecting the bias of the system? 100%. Uh, we try to avoid the SF groupthink bubble. Um, it's harder to avoid the AI groupthink bubble. That follows you everywhere. 
There's all kinds of bubbles we live in. 100%. It's, yeah. I'm going on like a around the world user tour soon for a month to just go like talk to our users in different cities. And uh, I can like feel how much I'm craving doing that because I haven't done anything like that since in years. Um, I used to do that more for YC. Mm -hmm. And to go talk to people in super different contexts and it doesn't work over the internet like to go show up in person and like sit down and like go to the bars they go to and kind of like walk through the city like they do you learn so much and get out of the bubble so much um i think we are much better than any other company i know of in san francisco for not falling into the kind of like sf craziness but i'm sure we're still pretty deeply in it but is it possible to separate the bias of the model versus the bias of the employees. The bias I'm most nervous about is the bias of the human feedback raters. Ah, so what's the selection of the human? Is there something you could speak to at a high level about the selection of the human raters? This is the part that we understand the least well. We're great at the pre-training machinery. Um, we're now trying to figure out how we're going to select those people. How like how we'll like verify that we get a representative sample how we'll do different ones for different places, but we don't we don't have that functionality built out yet. Such a fascinating um, science. You clearly don't want like all American elite university students giving you your labels. Well, see, it's not about- I'm sorry, that, I just can never resist that dig. Yes, nice. <laughs> but it's, it's, so that that's a good, th there's a million heuristics you can use. That's a, uh, to me, that's a shallow heuristic because uh, universe, like any one kind of category of human that you would think would have certain beliefs might actually be really open-minded in an interesting way. So you, you have to like optimize for how good you are actually answering, the, at doing these kinds of rating tasks, how good you are at empathizing with an experience of other humans. That's a big one. Like, and, and be able to actually like, what does the worldview look like for all kinds of groups of people that would answer this differently? I mean, I have to do that. Uh, constantly instead of like you've asked this a few times but it's something i often do you know i ask people in an interview or whatever to steel man uh the beliefs of someone they really disagree with and the inability of a lot of people to even pretend like they're willing to do that is remarkable yeah what i find unfortunately ever since covid even more so that there's almost an emotional barrier it's not even an intellectual barrier. Before they even get to the intellectual, there's an emotional barrier that says, no, anyone yeah. who might possibly believe X, it, they're they're an idiot, they're evil, they're malevolent, any, yeah. anything you want to assign. It's like, they're not even like loading in the data into their head. Look, I think we'll find out that we can make GPT systems way less biased than any human. Yeah. So hopefully without the... Um, because there won't be that emotional load there. Yeah, the emotional load. Uh, but there might be pressure. There might be political pressure. Oh, there might be pressure to make a biased system. What I meant is the technology I think will be capable of being much less biased. 